Durham, North Carolina, 2019. A blanket of pollen covered the city. It looked like something out of a horror movie, said photographer Jeremy Gilchrist. Residents were sneezing and coughing, and it got so bad, some had to be put on antibiotics. Your car was suddenly yellow, the sidewalk was yellow, the roof of your house was yellow, said Kevin Lilly, assistant director of the city's landscape services. The area had around 1,800 grains of pollen per cubic meter of air. How could this even happen? After all, nature has been functioning perfectly for all this time, and we never hear about historical allergies. In fact, we didn't hear about bad allergies before the 1970s. Why is that? The pollen apocalypse has been building for decades. To really learn how this happened, we have to go back. To the Netherlands, 1910. Something was killing the elm trees. Crazy patterns were showing up on trunks of trees, and whole trees would wilt and die in as little as a month. And it was contagious. Whole forests were turning brown and dying. And there really wasn't any way to stop it. The cause was discovered by Dutch phytopathologist B. Schwartz. In 1922, she isolated the fungus behind the tree deaths. It was carried by bark beetles, which would bury beneath the bark of elm trees and eat the dry wood, shedding fungal spores by the million. After decimating European trees, the bark beetles hopped on board a shipment of logs from Britain to the US, which was a big problem because in the Edwardian era, Elm trees were the tree of choice in America. Cities and towns were lined with stately elm trees that were loved both for their straight trunks and because they're hermaphrodites. Wait, what? That's right, hermaphrodites. To reproduce, some trees have flowers that give off pollen and some trees sprout flowers to be pollinated. The trees that give off pollen are male you can tell they're male because they have a stamen. And the trees that sprout pollinated flowers and seed pods are female. They have a stigma. Elm trees have both pollinated flowers and give off pollen. Trees that have separate genders are called dioecious, like cedar, yew, and ash. Trees that are hermaphrodites are called monoecious, like elm, birch, oak, and pine. Trees that have both male and female parts in the same flower are called perfect, like apple and hazelnut trees. Because elm trees are hermaphrodites or monoecious, they release pollen, but they also catch it. It was part of the reason they were planted so widely in the 1900s. They didn't drop a lot of litter and they didn't release a lot of pollen. But the lack of diversity was a recipe for disaster when Dutch elm disease hit. It decimated the American elm population, and by 1989, an estimated 75% of North America's 77 million elm trees were dead. That's around 58 million trees. Many American streets were bare. There certainly wasn't any pollen. So how did we get to the pollen apocalypse today? You can blame it on one short sentence in the 1949 USDA book called Yearbook of Agriculture. When used for street plantings, only male trees should be selected to avoid nuisance from the seed. So that's what city planners and landscapers did. They planted male trees all over the US. The USDA figured that pollen would be blown away by wind or washed away by rain, making pollen an easier civic duty to manage than seed pods or overripe fruit that would actually have to be cleaned up by people. But city planners and landscapers didn't stop there. Landscapers also used cloned male trees all over the US and cloned male plants dominated nurseries it was easier to clone plants than wait for male and female plants to pollinate. So male clones became the norm. 
After the USDA 1949 guidelines were released, the USDA produced and released into the market almost 100 new red maple and hybrid maple clones, and every single one of them was male. You might be thinking, Allie, there's no way they were actually cloning plants in the 1950s. But cloning in terms of plants actually means something different. It's a way of propagating plants, where you take a cutting of the original plant and it grows into its own plant. It also allows for some non-natural selection. The wholesale growers learned how to select a male scion wood from trees that were monoecious, and we started to see trees never before seen in nature, such as seedless cypress and podless honey locust trees. These new hyper male plants didn't drop any seeds or fruit, and for a while, people thought they had beat nature. But nature had other plans. After the post-Dutch elm disease replanting, it took a number of years for the new young trees to mature enough to start blooming. Eventually, they did bloom, and with them came the epidemic of allergy and asthma. Many of those original trees are still alive and well, and getting even bigger. And the bigger they get, the more pollen they shed. Male trees and plants all over the nation began shedding tons and tons of pollen. There were no female trees to catch the pollen, so it swept over towns and cities in yellow clouds. Scientists had discovered in 1873 that pollen grains were a causative agent behind allergies, but they didn't discover until 1967 that the cause of seasonal allergies was pollen aggravating our own antibodies. Antibodies released by your immune system attach to the allergens and then trigger the release of the inflammatory chemical histamine, which is what causes your eyes to itch and your nose to run. But nobody had made a connection between our worsening allergies and the overabundance of pollen-producing trees. Tom Ogren was working as a prison landscaper in San Luis Obispo, California in the 1990s. His wife, Yvonne, was suffering from some bad allergies, and he wasn't convinced. He was reading a book about how allergies, which hit women hardest, are psychosomatic or our brains invent them. And he agreed. But when his workers underneath a certain kind of tree were sniffling and sneezing more than the others, Ogren realized that the plants producing the most allergy-triggering pollen were male, and that most municipal plantings were using just male plants to mitigate the droppings. It was a breakthrough. He was the first person to link exacerbated allergies with urban planting policy. Ogren threw himself into this discovery. He got a master's in horticulture and has written three books on the subject. He developed the Ogren Plant Allergy Scale, called OPALS, to rate trees from 1 to 10 on their allergy potential. It's intended to guide cities to plant less allergenic trees. Ogren calls it botanical sexism. He argues that if cities had planted the opposite, all female instead of all male, it would have been just as sterile and tidy without any pollen because female trees don't make fruits or seeds if there are no males around. A large tree will scatter its pollen within 20 to 30 feet of its roots, so female trees would simply have to be planted outside of that range to avoid most pollination. Another argument against female trees is that some smell really bad like the female ginkgo tree. When the female ginkgo is in heat, people say it smells like rotting fish or vomit. But Ogren likes to argue, if the city only planted female ginkgo, it'd be less likely they'd be fertilized. There'd be no post coital odor and no pollen. Ogren's biology stands up to academic scrutiny in the field of horticulture and urban forestry. But many experts dislike calling it botanical sexism. They think ascribing a very human problem to the botanical world is trivializing. Unfortunately, Ogren's work is an uphill battle. Not only are states slow on the uptake of opals, 
but our environment is making the problem even worse. According to a recent study, the increase in extreme temperatures that we've seen in the last few years, thanks to global warming, is contributing to more potent allergy seasons. Plus, high levels of carbon dioxide cause trees to produce pollen at up to four times their natural rate. Summers come earlier and last longer, and certain species, such as cypress and juniper, have allegedly begun blooming again in the fall. So thanks to global warming, we have earlier and longer budding seasons and increased pollen production. And the pollen problem is clear across the country. 70% of the trees are male dioecious trees, chosen to be hardy in winter and withstand smog, but very pollen releasing. It's a problem that doesn't have an immediate solution because no one is going to cut down trees just because they cause us allergies. The only thing that we can do is replant with trees low on the opal scale. For now, we have to live with the millions and millions of male trees that we planted. So when you're cursing nature this spring because of your sniffles, we suggest redirecting because we did this to ourselves. What do you think about seasonal allergies? Let us know in the comments, make sure you like this video, click subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell for post notifications. We'll see you next time.